Hello and welcome to the video! Today is the 10th anniversary of Skylanders Giants, so I thought it would be fun to go through all of the alpha builds discovered by members of Obscure Gamers and make a huge list of all the changes in the enemies I could find. Before I start talking about the enemies though, I have a small update on the video I made for the early Skylanders. When I made that video, I saw Technosaur crash and immediately moved on assuming it had nothing else interesting. Well, it turns out that a Technosaur's character file actually has this piece of concept art that would have been used for the UI. I'm aware some people already know about this, I just felt like mentioning it for those who don't. But with that out of the way, it's time for the enemies. I'll be starting in Time of the Giants, and I'll go through the chapters in story order. Since I'll be going over six different versions here, I'll have a little text indicator in the top left showing which version is currently displayed. Enjoy! Bone Chompy. Bone Chompies were instead originally called Undead Chompies. Archean Jouster. If you've played Spyro's Adventure and Giants, you've probably noticed that a few enemies from Giants are texture or model swaps of the Spyro's Adventure enemies. Most of those use their original counterparts in these early builds. Archean Jousters are the first of them, and they had the same description and model as Archean Defenders. At one point, their description was changed to Trouble by the Pound. We'll be seeing a lot of those alternate descriptions. The charged version also had a separate intro cutscene, but they have the same description. These guys were used as a placeholder for a different enemy as well, but that'll come later in the video. Conquertron. Conquertron is looking a bit different here. According to Nordicus's dialogue, this version is canonically unfinished. He certainly fits that description as he does not move at all. Even when you destroy the chains, he does not budge an inch. He does have some unused text-to-speech voice lines though, including this wonderful gem. For some weird reason, the last chain doesn't show up, making it impossible to beat him normally. However, while messing around for my video about unused Skylanders in these alphas, I accidentally found out that aiming where the chain should be with Rhino's cannon makes it appear, but it just disappears when you shoot. But, by bringing in a second player, you can target the chain with Rhino and finish him off with player 2. He, he still doesn't move, by the way. Even with all of his supports gone, he continues standing there menacingly. There's also a version of his final design with stop-motion-like animation, unfinished hands, and voice lines without any filters. You have trespassed on the site of our glorious temples. Cool. Later versions also have some extra unused animations. Root Runner. Er, sorry, I meant... Jumpy Pod Walker. Er, sorry again, I meant... Pod crawlers might have not been meant to run at all. In the final game, all the root runners have legs, even the ones that don't run anywhere. In these early versions, none of them have legs, and they only appear spawning frigid chompies or By the or way, it chompies. has two early Combine that with the fact that there are normal chompy pods here spawning regular chompies, and this unused red chompy pod which spawns on fuego chompies, and it's likely that giants would have had something similar to spot force where the pod would be colored depending on the chompies it spawns. By the way, it has two early descriptions. The first one is copied from SSA's Chompy Pods. The other, far superior hint, is... It has legs. Very helpful. Droll Lancemaster. Droll Lancemasters look like the Droll Spearmen from the Wii version of Treetop Terrace, and their early hint is, the ears aren't the only pointy thing. Same thing with Armored Lancemasters. Bark Demon. Bark Demons are Stump Demons. Their original name was Stump Hellion, and the early descriptions are feeds on chompies and loves chompy snacks to heal but will wear his roots. It also has an intro sequence in Secret Vault of Secrets, meaning it was probably not planned to be in Junkyard Isles at first. Strangely enough, the Stump Demon also has an announcer line which introduces it as a Stump Feed, which is still in the finals files. Dro Archer. Have you ever wondered, huh? Why is the Dro Archer clearly an SSA imp and not a Dro? Well, as it turns out, they actually were originally Dro. Why did they change it? No idea, considering it even appeared in one of the official guidebooks. Not only do they look different, but they attack differently too. Instead of shooting directly into the air, they would shoot three arrows forward in a curved arc. This was possibly changed to give them a bit of extra range. Early description is speed, accuracy, fire. Chompy. Chompies have an intro in Cutthroat Carnival. The armored version has misplaced armor, but that's their only difference. Life Spellpunk. These guys have their SSA description. 
Goliath Dro. Dro Goliaths actually were changed for this game, but were seemingly changed back pretty quickly. The basic version is like an armored one, where you have to knock off both shields before damaging it. The actual armored version appears as a blitzer bully with five pieces of armor, and has a cool little feature where you can either hit the armor or the bully itself depending on where your attack connects. Both of them turn extremely quickly if you hit them while charging, which is honestly kind of scary. The basic one reuses their SSA description. It also has this alternate announcer take which mispronounces Dro. Goliath Drow. Now that we're at Cutthroat Carnival, it's time to talk about Sky Stones! During development, every stone used a barrel as a placeholder, either called a Mesa Barrel or just the number of the card. You would have been able to buy decks of cards from Toys Toys R Us, aka Auric, although there was only one deck made before they changed to the final system. Speaking of the final system, from now on I'll also be mentioning any changes to an enemy's Sky Stone. For the enemies we've gone over so far, there are only three differences. Conquertron has its unused hands, Ruiner's legs exist inside its mouth, and Archean Jouster 1 doesn't have a unique animation. Mohawk Cyclops. Mohawk Cyclops does this for its Skystone animation. Early intros are more deadly with a mohawk and invulnerable while spinning. Armored Cyclopses have two different intros, now with protection and one of my personal favorites, takes a lickin' and keeps on spinning. They're also cacti according to the camera. Executioner. Quigley's favorite. Uses a Cyclops Chopper as a placeholder. These guys act really similar to their final counterparts, but there are still a few big differences. First up, you can only hit them after they throw the axe, all attacks bounce off otherwise. Next, this version is actually missing their classic spin teleport attack. Instead, when it wants to move, it teleports a small distance and then runs the rest of the way. Finally, they can't magically call back their axe from as far away. They run towards it while doing this wonderful animation and grab it once they get close enough. There's also this version using the final model with an even better walking animation and a shield that does nothing. Early name is Biclops. Anyways, you'd expect the intro for Executioners to have a warning about the axe, right? Some helpful hint like, watch out for its long range attack, or be careful when using melee attacks. Nope, its size matters. Frigid Chompy. Besides chomping, of course, they also love to sleep. Early intros are, freezing breath will stop you in your tracks instead of the word icy, and beware his frozen nips. Bagel Boom. Early hint is, BOOM! For real! Ah, uh, with that, we're done with Glacier Gully. I'll just power up this robot, and we can head over to the secret vault of- HA! You fell right into my trap! Oh heck, I forgot about Noodles! Looks like he finally figured out how to wake up the great evil Ice Master! Now, you're gonna pay for your mistake! In all seriousness though, it would have been really cool if this made it to the final game. They must have stopped working on it pretty early on unfortunately, as it is exactly the same across the first three builds until finally being completely gone in build 4. As for the actual fight, it's pretty short, so I'll do a quick overview including the placeholder text-to-speech lines for Noodles and Machine Ghost. So first, your Skylander approaches the robot only for Noodles to intercept and hijack the robot. Nice job! Now you just need to plug me into him and what all? Ha ha. Thanks for doing all the dirty work for me there, pal. This guy calls us his pal but I have a strange feeling he is not friendly. In fact, I'm starting to believe he wants to use the robot against us. For phase one, you have to dodge the robot's hands coming from above and then attack them. I was right. This guy isn't our friend. Quick attack the robot's hands. Once you hit the hands enough, the robot's power overloads, launching noodles out for you to attack. Good work. And we all overload his power supply. As I suspected, we overloaded the robot. But only for a minute. Now get that guy. Teach him to pretend to be our friend. Yeah. After taking a third of noodles' health, the robot recovers and noodles jumps back in. Wow, you really worked this guy over. But it looks like the robot has recharged. This time, you have to dodge laser blasts as well as the robot's fists. Okay, you know the drill here, watch out for those fists. Ooh, forgot about those tracking lasers. Watch out of them too. Like the first phase, the robot malfunctions and Noodles becomes vulnerable. The robot's overloaded again. That means it's time to pound this creep. After another third of Noodles' health, the robot recovers once again. Oh no, the robot has recharged. 
But don't worry, we are wearing him down. I can feel it. For the final phase, the robot fires lasers before and after using its fists. I'll get away from those targets. Just keep hitting those hands. What an odd vulnerable spot, Tal. I think we're almost there. Just pound this guy a little more. Noodles gets launched out a third and final time and you attack him more. You g g g g g g h h h h h h However, when Noodles is nearly defeated, the robot heals him back to full health. Luckily, the robot returns to the side of good right after and absolutely obliterates Noodles. The battle is now over. Didn't see that coming. But it looks like the robot is finally back on our team. Now just plug me in and I can help you pilot him. Okay, that wasn't really quick. I blame the text-to-speech. Speaking of that though, the text-to-speech lines don't actually play during the level. I got them from the files. Strangely, although the fight was removed in Build 4, they added some non-text-to-speech lines for Noodles hitting you, getting hit, and being defeated. <laughs> oh! Well, you haven't heard the last of Noodles! Even stranger, these lines were later updated and are still in the final game's files. Ha ha ha! Well, you haven't heard the last of Noodles! If this wasn't removed, there might have been an end-level boss in every odd-numbered chapter, Conquertron, Brock, Noodles, Chompy Mage, Brute, Drill X, The Oracle, which has no solid proof of being a boss, but there are music files in the alpha labeled Oracle Phase 2 and 3. And Chaos, while well, City of Arcus and Bringing Order to Chaos could be considered one long two part chapter. Anyway, Secret Vault of Secrets, for real this time. Defense drones. I, I couldn't find a voice line for them. They come out of the bridges instead of the auto gyro and move really slowly. Archean auto gyro. They stick around a lot longer than usual and don't summon defense drones. They also do no damage for some reason. Archean Ultron. Like the auto gyros here, they do no damage. There's also a distinct lack of an actual shooting animation. Archean War Machine. If you shoot instead of punch in the earliest versions, they kinda just. In later versions, though. Shooting this guy is not going to get us anywhere. You can prove Machine Ghost wrong and shoot the War Machine to death. You'll take so much damage from his punches that you'll die from basically anything afterwards, but still, just wanted to point out that you can. Archean Bomber. Archean Bombers appear as Archean Defenders with a very light yellow and green texture, complete with unused throwing animations. Sometimes they throw two bombs, but that could be a bug. A very unique thing about this specific enemy is that one build has this early version and the final version coexisting in the same level. I'm no expert, but that could possibly mean that some of the early versions of the enemies are still buried in the final files. Other than that though, there's absolutely nothing unusual about this enemy, just completely normal animations. Early intros are WARNING! Bombs will stick, shake to dislodge, and STICKY BOMBS ARE FUN! Boulder Bowler. At least I'm pretty sure this is a Boulder Bowler. It didn't have a completed model at this time, so it just uses a Chompy. When it sees the Skylander, it turns into a ball of spikes and rolls forward. If it hits them, it bounces into the air. It has some pretty weird interactions with enemies too. This Archean bomber constantly throws bombs at it, and picking up the bombs makes them snap to the bowler instead of the Skylander. Additionally, while it's rolling, if it hits the Jouster, the Jouster just gets stuck. It's a real shame that there's not a more completed version. On the bright side though, due to how Skystones work in these, we can see a bit of what would have been the Builder Bowler's idol animation. Archean Shield Juggernaut. Juggernauts are somehow even more annoying. While they're shielded, they only ever take one damage per attack, or none at all, depending on the version. This might have been changed because interrupting its attack causes its shielded state to stay on, so it can use melee attacks while also being immune from the front and basically immune from the back. Early intros are surprises lie behind that shield and keep your enemies closer. They originally did not have shield in their name. Also, sometimes this happens. Mace Major. Mace Majors would have been called Amazing Trolls. Early intros are Troll, Mace, Face, Happy Dance, and Spikes plus button, ouchies. In Fuego Chompy. Early intro is Explosive on Contact. Test Enemy. 
Some versions of Willikin Village have these chompies that stand around and do nothing. They can't be hit, and walking next to them makes them despawn. Probably a test to make sure battle gates were working. Grenade General Grenade Generals used the Troll Grenadier design. While most returning enemies had leftover SSA intros which were then changed to original ones, Grenade Generals went the other way around for some reason. Their early, original hint is, a grenade in the hand is worth- BOOM! Chompy Mage Chompy Mage is literally a giant chompy in the earliest builds. The earliest version doesn't have the mage form, but what it does have is a broken camera. I don't know where it is trying to go. The giant chompy stops moving after a while and lets you kill him. This fight is a bit more complete in later versions. Anyway, here's a picture of one of Chaos's earliest concepts. Why am I bringing this up now? Well, it's because they actually used it as a placeholder for Chompy Mage's mage form. Only seems to have this one animation, unfortunately. The healing circles have bigger hitboxes than the damaging ones here, so you can just do this with no risk at all. Before we head over to Troll Home Security, I just wanted to show this. I love early versions of games. D Riveter. They have an SSA style intro, stating Rosie would be proud. Like all of the enemies introduced in Troll Home Security, it has an alternate announcer take. The Riveter. Early intro is rivets can cause fires. Landmines just plain hurt. Chompy Bot 9000. This early design for Chompy Bot 9000 is probably one of the most commonly known things about these alphas. Not only is it objectively cooler looking, but they must have seriously considered using it since it's in all six alphas, two different strategy guides, and it even has a sky stone. Here's the alternate announcer take. Chompy Bot 9000. Inhuman Shield. Inhuman Shields also have an SSA intro, with the description, protects enemies with an impenetrable shield. It was later changed to some things must be done from behind. Not much else about them other than this alternate take. Inhuman Shield. Archean Crackler. Archean Cracklers have nothing different. You know what does have something different though? Fire Spell Punk. Okay, fine, it's just a placeholder for the Cracklers, but this one has a completely unique ability. While the one in Chaos's castle acts like a normal Crackler, the one in Mulliken Mountain does three different things depending on the build. In build 3, it's the same as the Chaos's castle punk, an ordinary Crackler. By the way, since they didn't make a special animation for the spell punks with the Crackler ability, the way to determine which one is real is to just look for the one that isn't flickering. For build 2, they start teleporting and then just never stop. It's probably supposed to be like the final one, but they just forgot to make it actually spawn clones. Looks like they're having fun at least. Finally, build 1 has a special trick. After spawning the clones, it runs away while the clones act like on fuego chompies and explode next to you. Once all the clones explode, it spawns three more. Timid clubs. They are a box. That is all. Troll Stomper M5. Troll Stompers are broken and can only aim in one direction. They have the alternate name Troll Tech Mech. Armored Punk. They had an intro. They even had a description, enemy medic with armor. I can't think of a reason why this would be removed. Jawbreaker. Jawbreakers were likely planned to be trolls, judging by the early name Iron Spike Trollson. It's possible that the idea of a troll boxer was later reused for Bruiser Cruiser in Trap Team. After attacking, they take unusually long to get back up. During aerial attack, you can trick them into falling off with a special animation. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember seeing that anywhere in the final game. Unfortunately, there aren't any new enemies in aerial attack, unless you count the entire ghost ship itself! Instead of sabotaging the main cannon, you'd get back on the dread yacht for one last turret sequence. You'd have to destroy the rudder, 15 cannons, some chompy bots, and the propellers. Just like with the noodles fight, the final game has leftover lines for this event. First thing you'll want to do is take out that rudder. Good! Boom! Now! Take out all those cannons, preferably before they fire at us. Oh yeah, yeah, get every last one of them. Chompy bots on board the ghost ship. Yeah, it's crazy, but now you gotta take them out. Okay, now just hit those propellers. Even a ghost ship can't fly without those, right? Blaze Brewer. 
Ever wondered why Blaze Brewers are called Flamethrower Pirates in Flashwing's Heroic Challenge? Well, it's because that's exactly what they were, Captain K9s with Flamethrowers. They act exactly the same, just with different animations. Its model was updated before the voice, so there's a version of the Blaze Brewer that makes pirate noises. I'm not sure what it is about it, but there's just something really funny about hearing <laughs> coming from these guys. Early intro is Burns Hotter Than Indigestion. Crystal Golem. The Crystal Golem is now the Stone Golem with Crystals. Completely different. This version can't take any damage until its three crystals with inconsistent hitboxes are destroyed. After the crystals are gone, it pushes the Skylander away, only attacking when the Skylander is close enough. At least it tries to. It has a tendency to overestimate how far it can attack. I mean, this I can understand, it's pretty close, but then there's this. It just doesn't want to acknowledge the fact it's missing its crystals. It's the only enemy with a placeholder model to have an intro cutscene made for it, so that's pretty cool. In fact, this intro cutscene was updated almost every build. Here's another one that doesn't take any damage while it has crystals, who slowly screams at the sky, and then proceeds to jam out. Here it goes out of its way to destroy this random panel. Early description is, don't run, just hide. Best character in the game, I mean Drill X. Like Chompy Mage, Drill X is a boss who uses an early model for a different boss as a placeholder. This time, they stuck a drill onto the spider tank, the original concept for the troll super tank. The spider tank version of the fight has a basic outline of all three phases. I might as well mention that you can clone him by messing around with the debug free cam. I already made a video about that, so check it out if you want. Unfortunately, that's really all there is for him in terms of alpha content. Slobbering Muticus. The Slobbering Muticus already has its final model in these builds, probably because it was originally created to be an SSA Skylander. Early hint is slobber in the hole! Here's one of them enjoying a nice casual Pipsqueak. Invincible Pipsqueak. This is not a drill. I repeat, Pipsqueak is invincible. At least until he spins around once. Then he's no longer invincible. After you cause him to bring in the Shadow Duke, he actually doesn't despawn here. He continues fighting with the Shadow Duke. Because of that, you can then kill him for real. Shadow Duke. They use the same model as Shadow Knights and later reuse their description. Spiderlings. Spiderlings themselves don't really have any differences, but they do have an announcer line which calls them their old SSA name. Spider Swarmer Gargantula. This is the only enemy to have zero changes. I'm only mentioning it here because if I don't, someone will say, You forgot Gargantula in the comments. Archean Autogyro, Archean War Machine, and Archean Ultron. We already talked about how these attack you during the giant robot segments, but now it's time to talk about the Autogyro segments. In these versions, you have to dodge projectiles from these three instead of dodging the random spinning lasers. The Ultrons hang out on the barricades, the Autogyros hover in the air, just like Secret Vault of Secrets, and the War Machines walk down below. However, you can use your rockets at any time, not just for destroying the shields. You can use your rockets to destroy the auto gyres and ultrons, but shooting the war machine just makes it do the startup animation on the spot non-stop. As a bonus, the ultrons guarding the landing spot have slower branching projectiles. Most importantly though, the mini ultrons that pop up to provide rockets are lock puzzle imps. I always knew those things were evil. Drog Pincher Trog Pinchers have a very broken intro cutscene. By the way, this never ends, you have to skip it. They also have a slightly less broken intro cutscene. It still never ends. They were originally Rue Babies. Like in the final game, their hints only appear for one or two frames before they get cut off by the Duelists intro. No cool hints here, unfortunately, just copy pasted from the Wii version of Rue Babies. Funnily enough, their description in the final game is exactly the same as the Rue Babies hint, except just without the word pink. Archean Duelist. Remember when I said we'd be seeing the Jousters again later? Well, here they are. 
Unlike most of the placeholder models, these ones were given new animations, two for attacking and one for charging. This is actually where the Archean Jouster Skystone animation comes from. As for the final design, the early description is a lie. It says Master of Slice and Dice, but I don't see Chop Chop anywhere. Just as a side note, this has always bothered me. I'd like to point out that you can see them appear out of thin air even in the final game. Weapon Master. Yeah, yeah, not an enemy. These Skystones are still definitely worth talking about, though. I'll just restart the match a few times and try to see if you can notice anything special about them. That's right, they're randomized. Any side can have from 0 to 2 spikes. It isn't always Mohawk Cyclops either, it's just whatever stone you have in the front of your deck at the time. For example, if I change it to a few others, you can see that his change as well. Trog Wanderer. Instead of shrinking when they get hit, Trog Wanderers lose their arms and head. After a few seconds, their limbs regrow, but they don't fully heal. It's sort of like instead of healing per se, they have three pieces of armor that can respawn. Their early name is Trog Freelancer, and this is their Skystone animation. Trogmander. Trogmander's early description is spell makes others grow, but never works on himself. Since the whole point of the Trogmander, or Trogmancer as it's called literally once in the alpha, is to transform Trog Pinchers, it's probably pretty obvious what their placeholder was. If you need a hint, their early name is literally Trog Spellpunk. If you still don't know, it's the Undead Spellpunk. They're actually still called Spellpunks by Callie in Zombie Dance Party's intro. Not much else to say about it since it's just ported directly from SSA, including the fact that it turns Rue Babies into Rue Barbs. Speaking of those two though, you know how Rue Babies and Rue Barbs don't have the same name? Well, neither do Trog Pinchers and their mutant form, which has been called a Trog Puncture the whole time. And yeah, they are originally Rue Barbs. The coolest part about them is that they have an unused Skystone. I only found out this existed because these alphas have randomized Skystone rewards, and it just so happened to give me the Trog Puncture. The only reason I can think of for it being scrapped is the fact that it's functionally identical to the Trog Wanderer, same element and everything. Archean Sniper. Archean Snipers are blaster trolls wearing spy gear and holding an unfinished sniper rifle model. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The manhole things they hide in are these crystals, and sometimes act a bit buggy. Instead of emerging from the ground when the snipers use them, sometimes they go completely underground instead. Other than that, they act like regular Archean snipers, just with some unfinished animations. Chaos. Ah, Chaos. How could you ever have a video about Skylander's enemies without him in it? With Tree Rex, that's how! Before Robo Chaos's model was completed, they used him as a placeholder. Because why would you use a giant version of regular Chaos when you have Treefex right there? That would be ridiculous. Nobody would ever do that. <laughs> the earliest version that has this boss in it just has the chase scene in a separate level. It looks like they were still deciding on how long the path should be, as half of it is completely empty. There's this other path splitting off, and after going there, I found out that Tree Rex is not going straight. He's specifically programmed to go directly for you. I did notice while running that you can actually damage Tree Rex here. The game speed option in the debug menu here luckily doesn't affect him, so I sped up Sniper and tried to kill him that way. Unfortunately, nothing actually happens when you kill him, he just flashes white and then can't be hit anymore. After the rest of the fight was added in for the next build, we can find two big unused things. First of all, there's an entire unused phase where Chaos would trap the Skylander between his hands and you'd have to damage the Fist of Arcus while dodging his eye lasers. The rest of the fight goes basically the same way as the released game, except with the phase transitions being described as text with two tree rexes battling in the background. The final phase is slightly different though. Instead of damaging Chaos's head or the blob generator, you would be forced to destroy the second generator. Once you successfully destroy it, its electricity would completely destroy the Fist of Arcus, letting Ermit force Chaos's head onto the arena with no way for Chaos to fight back. In the first build where Robo Chaos actually exists, he has some cool debug features. Pressing up on the control pad lets you go forward a phase, and down on the control pad goes back a phase. You can also spawn some random Archean jousters by pressing C for some reason. I accidentally crashed the game like that because I was just trying to skip the cutscene. 
The final difference with Robo Chaos's fight has to do with these war machines following him that you can barely see on an actual Wii, thanks to the horrible resolution. They aren't actually told to despawn here, so they keep walking forward until they touch the battle arena, making the fight look a bit more awkward. With all of the enemies from the main game done, I might as well touch on some other miscellaneous stuff, starting with the Toy Fair demo. This area was used at the 2012 Toy Fair to show off what the giants could do, but unfortunately the enemies aren't exactly functional in this alpha. We've got bone chompies that do nothing, a bone and arrow that does nothing, drogoliaths that walk forward and then do nothing, troll grenadiers that do nothing, dro spearmen that do nothing, and dro spearmen that walk at you aggressively. The root runner is the most functional thing here. The SSA versions of the four adventure packs with their unique enemies are all here, but none of them work correctly. In Darklight Crypt, Pirate Seas, and Empire of Ice, the enemies exist but can't move or take damage. Pirate Seas and Empire of Ice have a problem where the enemy intros never end, so the camera gets stuck. If you cheat through with the debug free cam, Pirate Seas is the only one that can actually be beaten. The Realm Shifter in Oculus' fight doesn't work, and Haldor doesn't react to you getting the second or third catapult, which is why those two levels are impossible. Then there's Dragon's Peak, where the camera's just stuck like this, so you can't do anything, period. By the way, Chompy Pod also has a voice line. Chompy Pod! Ambush! Almost all of the ambushes are like the final game, but with much lower health and dealing much, much less damage. Other than the same camera problems that Chompy Mage had, the only different things are the evil eruptor ambush being against one giant eruptor instead of two normal ones, and the evil amphibious Gilman ambush having early announcer lines. Elemental face off. Water. Gilman defeated. Elemental face off. Victory. Rotting Robbie. They had a voice line made for them, which you just heard. If you use the free cam to walk around where they are in Zombie Dance Party, they will attack you. So much for just wanting to dance. They actually act exactly the same as the early Trog Wanderers, as after you attack them, they start regrowing their limbs, and then you can kill them. When you grab one of their actual heads, it just spawns a new one, though. There's a single voice line referring to a Slick Chompy. Last, but certainly not least, Sheep Mage! I bet this was unexpected, right? The Sheep Mage might have originally been planned to be a basic enemy. They never had a model made for them for this game, though, so they just use a Mace Major. They stand on the Enigma Pig from SSA, spawning sheep with dynamite attached to them when you get close. The sheep themselves are basically on Fuego Chompies, but nothing can kill them except for the dynamite on their back. Well, those are all the differences I could find in the alphas. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you want to see more Skylanders content. I'd love to make more videos exploring the Giants alphas, as well as the ones for Swap Force, Superchargers, Racing, or even just having fun messing around with the files of the released versions. I will soon be making a quick tutorial video on how to play the unused characters, since a few different people asked for that. Goodbye for now, and I'll see you when I finally stop procrastinating enough to work on another video.